You've probably wondered that if you were to dig a hole on the ground on which you're standing, how deep could you dig? So imagine you had some perfect means of boring through the earth. Where would you end up? Well, we know the earth is round, but let's say that we were to stand at Frere Hall, Karachi. Then it's easy to figure out that if you dig and dig and dig, you will come out at the other end of the earth. It's a place in South America called Hangaroa. What a beautiful place this is. Wouldn't you like to go there for a vacation? The only problem is that if you go all the way around, it will be about 20 to 21,000 kilometers of journeying, and that takes a very long time. It will take you several days by airplane as well, and the ticket won't be cheap. But wait, if we were to dig a tunnel, that tunnel going from one end of the earth to the other will be let's say about something like 13,000 kilometers. And so that's a big saving in terms of distance. Now, if you drop a body at zero speed from the surface, it'll start moving towards the center, go to the other side. And unless you stop it over there, it'll go back to where it came from. This will keep repeating itself again and again because we've assumed that there is no friction. Okay, so never mind how we make the tunnel. Let's say that we do that. Well, of course, I'll go through the tunnel because everything wants to fall down because of the force of gravity. Gravity pulls everything down. But look, there's a, a slight misconception over there. Gravity can pull things up as well. Gravity happens whenever you have one piece of matter, another piece of matter, they will attract each other towards each other. So the force is attractive like this. Now, the best way to understand gravity is, of course, now that we are on the surface of the Earth, we let something, we drop something. So if you drop something, it's going to fall down and it's going to accelerate down. Where there's force, there's acceleration. And that acceleration has a certain value. It's uh, given the letter G, G for gravity. And uh, that value is 9.8 meters per second per second. So 9.8 meters per second squared. Now, to understand how long it will take us to fall to the center of the Earth and how long to come out to the other side, we can use this very simple thing called the pendulum. Now this pendulum is, of course, just a mass and there's a thread or something that keeps it at fixed distance. And you see that it goes back and forth, back and forth, because the force of gravity attracts this down, so now it's at a high point and now it's at a low point. The fact that it has gone from a high point to a low point is because of gravity. And what it has done is it has lost its, its, its potential energy, gravitational potential energy, and converted that into kinetic energy. Now, you see that um, if I was to put a different mass over there, it didn't it wouldn't matter. It would be still swinging at the same frequency that you see. All right, now let's try and understand the pendulum better. Okay, so let me sketch for you a simple pendulum, as simple as it gets. So when the bob is at its highest, it's here, and when it's at the lowest, it's here. This is a length of string, L, and the highest point and the lowest point are separated 
by a distance h, small h. Now, the kinetic energy at the center will be equal to the potential energy at the ends, either the left end or the right end. And that simply is saying that energy is conserved. Now you know that the kinetic energy is half mass into the square of the velocity and it's equal to the potential energy so that's mgh all right the m's cancel on both sides we put therefore v equals square root of 2 into g into h and that's um, well let's say that the height is one centimeter above the lowest point so h is one centimeter which is 10 to the power minus two meters in that case v is 0 0.44 meters per second now there is also a formula that you learnt in school that is the time period for one complete swing that is called the time period well, that's 2 pi square root of the length L divided by G. Now, the case of a body dropped into a tunnel through the center of the earth seems very, very different from that of a pendulum, but it's actually not. The similarity is because just like the pendulum wants to go to the point where the potential energy is the least. Similarly, the body, when it is dropped down into the hole, wants to go to the center of the earth where the potential energy is least and where the force is zero. Why is the force zero? Well, because there's a piece of matter that's pulling the body this way and there's a piece of matter that's pulling it the other way and they exactly balance each other at the center. And so everybody wants to fall to the center of the earth. Okay, now the question is, how long will it take and what will be the maximum speed? For this, we'll use exactly the same principle, which says that the total energy is constant and the acceleration is always directed towards that center point. They call it the equilibrium point. Now, just as we computed the speed at which the pendulum is moving at its lowest point, we can also compute the speed at which we will be moving inside the tunnel. The kinetic energy at the center will be equal to the potential energy which we had at the surface. And now that means, again, that half mv squared will be equal to m, the mass, times g, the acceleration due to gravity, and r, multiplied by r, where r is the radius of the earth. And so from here, again, the m's cancel, v squared is 2gr, well, let's just put in the values of g and of the radius, which is 6,371 times 10 to the 3 meters. That's because one kilometer is 1,000 meters. And that works out to, my goodness, it works out to 40,000 228 kilometers per hour. Now that's going to be fast. That is very, very fast. In fact, it's faster than, um, uh, uh, than the rockets that we release from Earth, except at certain points where they are indeed moving somewhat close to the speed. 
Okay, so you're going to zip through the center, and now let's calculate how long it'll take to go from the surface to the center and from the center to the other side. So we already know that the time period for a pendulum's swing is 2 pi square root of L over G. Similarly, the time period for Earth travel, meaning to the center, is 2 pi square root of the radius of the Earth, R, divided by G. So the only difference is that the length of the pendulum has been replaced by the radius of the Earth. And this means that if you put in the value of R as 6, 3, 7, 1 kilometers, then the center will be reached after just 21.1 minutes. That means the other side can be reached after 42.2 minutes. And of course, if you want to, you'll eventually come back to Freyr Hall, Karachi after 84.4 minutes. And that's lovely, isn't it? After all, you can go and have a quick vacation and come back. You could do it on the weekend. Now, the only thing is that you may not want to go to Chile in South America, but you may want to go to London, to New York, to Beijing, wherever. Or you may want to go from Karachi to Islamabad. No problem. You just dig a tunnel that's sideways. So it doesn't go through the center of the earth. It just goes from wherever you are to wherever you want to go. How long will that take? Answer is exactly the same, 42.2 minutes. That's a little puzzling because after all, if you want to go to the other side of the earth, it, it's the distance you have to travel is so much larger. However, here the good thing is that although the distance is less, the, the, the acceleration is also less. And so the two balance each other. You get lower speeds and a lesser distance. Total time is the same. So all this is very wonderful, isn't it? And why haven't people done it? After all, it takes no energy. You could save so much jet fuel. Um, the problem is digging the tunnel. If you dig down towards the center of the Earth, it becomes hotter and hotter as you go down. In fact, the deepest that people have gone is only a few, kilometer, a few kilometers, about 12 or 14 kilometers at most, because at that time, at that place, the earth is so hot that uh, it melts even your drilling machinery. So there's a limit to how far you can go down. Now you can ask, why is the earth so hot? And that has to do with how it was formed. When it was formed, it was completely molten. And uh, so in fact, at the center of the earth, you have molten iron. And it stayed hot for about four and a half billion years because there's also radioactive fission that's going on inside and that's continuously generating heat. So therefore, there's not a chance that we'll ever be able to go through the Earth, or in fact, um, forget the center of the Earth, that we'll be able to travel big distances from point A to point B, where they're separated by more than a, a few tens of kilometers or a few tens of miles. So that's the unfortunate part, but uh, look, the beauty is that the simple pendulum can tell us so much about so much else.